welcome back. Today I'm over here in my shop trying to fix this boot because um, I went riding for about 30 miles on the blazing down the highway on that on the video, ripping the streets video. It was you seen how fast, how fast and how far it was going? Probably put the, uh, about 25, 30 miles on the bike in like. 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. It was rolling, so I ended up b busting a boot. So, this is the repair video showing y'all how to remove this boot, clean all of this off, pull this axle out, repair the boot, and put everything back together. Look at all that grease, the splatter. See, it wasn't a complete separation. You see the boot got the boots got real real high. Especially mainly this side right here. See, if you see how this boot starting to shrink like that, that means it got so high that it pushed the air out. The air seeped out from pressure because it probably blew up a little bit, and now it don't have enough pull to suck it back in. So now it's just shrunk. So that's why boots do that. If you ever see a boot like, looking like a blown tire and no grease leaking out of it, that means it probably got hot at one point. See on this side it didn't do that at all and the main reason why because uh if you look directly Milan y'all directly up this right side sticks out a little further than the left side when you're looking at the uh the back uh dry uh uh can't think of the, I can't think of the name of this right now oh well see it sticks out further on this side so what that does it makes a tighter angle from here to that axle. This angle is actually slightly more steep than this angle. So that tighter angle also makes more um, more pressure, more force to turn that wheel, which also creates more heat. And that's why this right side will always go out or heat up more than the left. Of course, there's only a small amount of lift on this bike. So it's not a big deal at all. This never really happens because I never ride 70 miles per hour, per hour for 10 and 15 minutes at a time, but well, that's the uh, result of it. So now we're gonna take this tire off, get all this straightened out, fix this all up. What do my adapter? All nice and good. Cleaning all this stuff off later. Always take your screws off and pop them right back in. That way you don't gotta worry about losing them. Take some of this grease off while I spread it everywhere. Just a little bit of it. I'll get it all clean after. See, this is the port right here. We gotta pull the whole back off right here. Get behind and yank all of this off, yank the differential out, and then we'll be able to pull this out because this is not gonna give us enough room because of the angle. It makes a hell of a difference if you got an impact too. You can fly through this a lot faster. Love using power tools, just gotta know how to use them the right way. Cause you'll mess stuff up just as fast as you take it off.
get when I pull that out. screws back to the 15s now we got four more bolts one two uh three oh i took the fourth one out already so it's four bolts that hold this in on uh, the rear differential i couldn't think of that at first the rear differential took one of them out already with the back plate Got three more left. All of them gonna be 15 mil. If I put my 15 mil back on. I got one more screw to get to that's holding the drive shaft on the real drive shaft and it's a 13 mil gotta lay on my back and get up under there see if I can get it for you guys it's right right up on the yoke right up inside the yoke the rear drive shaft I'm gonna turn the camera sideways it couldn't fit this whole tripod in there let me get that. I got the drive shaft out. You see, you pull off the uh, breather line with a differential. Now, I'm gonna keep both sides together. This is why it's good to check both, both your axles while you're doing this. Perform like a little intermittent maintenance because uh, these washers are bending. And with this bend, they're not strong enough. And what it's, what it's causing is, this to create slack between the nut and the axle from this pulling motion, and it's making my nut loose, which also makes your wheel wobble, which also wears out your bearing. So you don't want that going on too long. That's why it's good to check this stuff. some grease on here too because it's starting to seize up a little bit. Definitely grease all of this up.
just yanked it out. Just gave it a little pull and it released it from the back. Sometimes it just be getting jammed up in this area right here. So I have to give it a little pull. That little pull I gave it came out, pulled both of the axles out and it all slid out. Now, to take out this side, hopefully it comes out the first time you don't want, because uh, you got a, a lock ring on the inside of here. And they also have one on the inside of here. I don't want to pull this out there, so I'm going to try to do it the first time and yank this whole thing out of this lock ring, because usually this one releases first. There we go, first time. So now we're good with the rest of that. We're going to take this boot over here. Don't even look bad. Can't really see nothing right now. Take this over there. We're going to inspect this and repair it. So this is how we're going to change out. All the grease burnt up, everything solid black. Grease is completely gone, destroyed. So now I got more grease, more bands, and boots. Little moose boots, they're all just uh, solid and hard. All right, got it all cleaned out. Got some brake cleaner, just shot the brake cleaner all up in there good. Uh, you roll the cage all the way. You can pop the bearings out, remove the sleeve, the inner sleeve and all that, and get all that clean. And I mean, you can go in deep, go in clean as deep as you want to clean, but it's kind of it's kind of preference, so probably recommend it to take it all the way apart. I didn't take mine all the way apart. As long as you make sure all that brake cleaner is going out because the brake cleaner would definitely destroy that grease inside of there if you don't make sure it's all out nothing's draining out it's not dry on the inside once you get it all clean and drained out always start a new pack of grease and i'll shoot it down throw just a corner off of it and shoot a nice little bit of it down inside that way you get it started and you pop the uh pop the shaft back in so now while that's baking go ahead get this clean see this is why i love uh moose boots they got the hard boots. Real solid, strong, stable, sturdy boots. Made in the USA. America! No. Go ahead, and this, uh, this particular model is 
0213-0426. These axles are uh, Titan axles. Titan uh, S3 Power Sports. Uh, these are the Titan axles that are sold by S3 Power Sports. And this is the rear. And these go right over the rear perfect. Perfect. But it's the axles. These are the uh, boots I'll be replacing with. And they're actually cheaper than um, the boots that they uh, use because the boots that come on come on them are, are actually made by uh, Demon Power Sports. The action probably is too. I'm not even 100% sure. I know they, they put the Titan brand on them for, uh, for the S3 sake. But it's probably more than likely all coming from Demon Axles. So I'll replace it with this Moose. Strong, sturdy axle um, boot, um, boot. Slightly bigger. Look like in the, in the length in the band in the band clamp edge, but yeah, it's a little, it's a bigger head up here. This one has a slightly smaller base, but this is the original one I took off. Um, this is actually the original from the front, not the rear. But I'm um, I go go ahead and keep down for a size reference for the front, cause I gotta find a moose boot that'll fit the front the front axles. I already had some for the back. I used on my previous axles. So I'm gonna go ahead. that on there should have used that green grease that came in the mousse but I mean it's all CV grease I'll use this on my next one I'll put the rest of this in here just to get it pulled around the edge recommend using a rubber hem but you don't want to mess them all threads up and I go ahead and I put the rest of the grease Get it slid down in here. Now it's time to go ahead and do the banding. All right. I'll go ahead and make sure this top part slid in the groove. Get your band open. Try to get these flattened out. One thing I love to do, because even though the tension is going to straighten it out, if you have a little wallow in here, the tension will straighten out about 90% of it. That little wallow could cause you not to have a little, just enough pressure in probably your, in probably your weakest spot. So having it completely flat will keep that pressure 
um, equal all the way around whenever you put that clamp on. that uh, they give you with the moose boots. Hope that fan isn't too loud. I got it blasting. I stay cool. So this is my bander tool. Cheap little tool I got off of, uh, I think I got it off of eBay. I can't remember if it was eBay or uh, either, either eBay or um, Amazon. But they get it in, slide it through that slap, through that slap, through that slap, and then just start cranking. And then you're gonna see it slowly start to tighten up all over the room. Good tension. And that's another thing I love about these hard boots. These hard boots, you can put a lot of tension on here and it's not gonna cut. Those little softer boots, those fast boots, you, you could over tension those and actually cut into the boot. These have a lot more durability when it comes to doing this. And I like my boots real tight. See, once you get enough tension on it, you roll it back this way. And go ahead, press this red level and it's gonna cut it. Because uh, these things are actually sharp. You cut your hand messing with these things. idea was an air test and definitely you have to do this before you put this back on when you put it back together do an air test move it around and listen if you hear air squeezing out pretty easy like you don't got a hole and you barely hear you shouldn't hear any air you hear air squeaking out that means it's not sealed somewhere you got to redo the you got to redo a clamp so we're going to redo a clamp 
So the air was coming out right under here. And that's actually pretty common with these bands because the band has to overlap. So what happens when it overlaps one side, it leaves the surface of the, of the uh, circumference of the, uh, of the hub. And that little gap where it hikes up over, there's no pressure, zero pressure on a little area where it hikes up to go over, the little corner. And that's exactly where it was. So I'm gonna take them off and I'm gonna use a different clamp. I'll save that one for a small side. And that's why I bought these originally. These band clamps prevent that, area, that, uh, that little hike from happening. I use this banding tool for this. And these actually go on pretty damn easy. Installation of this. Put this side back on, stuff it back in. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off too. Get some debris up in here. So let's go ahead and put it back on. Okay, my battery was going low. All right, so check this out. So before, before I'm putting everything back together and um, back into the rear differential, I noticed that my the top side of that same axle wasn't plunging. It wasn't going in or out. It was stuck. It was seized. So this is actually what I was talking about just now with the first, with the uh, doing the, the other side of that same axle about taking it completely apart. See, this is the hub. This is the part that goes into the drive shaft. Snaps, that's, it pushes right in the drive shaft. Well, I don't know the exact names of everything, but this is basically the bearing cage, and this goes around. This is like the sleeve that goes around the shaft, that hugs the shaft, and this this goes in there, and you pop your bearings in each side of that and put this back together. But what I did basically, because it was sticking, don't know why if they had some foreign material in there. Everything looks good. Don't see any any issue didn't see any metal shavings anything major so I just took everything apart and cleaned it but the only thing I did notice was the grease was kind of gunky let me see if I can get that show y'all the grease the grease looked a little gunky I don't know why it don't look like it's waters in there or nothing but it just looks gunky I don't know but I did clean everything off take it out now I'm about to go ahead and reassemble everything back together. And we're gonna... So, that's how originally, how, first thing I did was uh, put this back in. So, way to put this in, it looked like it'll never go in because this is bigger than that. It's kind of a little trick to it. You gotta make sure you can see a, a window. Make sure you try to put it in with a wind on the arm. Um, slide it in directly in the line of a window. Put this in, roll it in, and see it drops in the back side. That's what that's what frees up the slack for it to go in. And then once you get it in, you can freaking open it up and twist it around. Now, now it's inside. It'll never come out now. It can only come out in that one direction. So now we got that in. So you put the cage in first. It's like it won't go in. Like I said, you gotta line the windows up with the flat side. Drop it down in there. Same thing, had a little grease on my hand. Put this in here. And I always wanna make sure that these little ridges 
the little spike ridges which is on only on one side because it's the back side smooth or pointing up so i'm gonna drop this in there okay once you get the sleeves put in you got no bearings in there basically just gotta pop your bearings in one by one and work your way around Got enough grease in that because <clears throat> and they're gonna move around if you don't got no grease. There you go. Everything inside now. Cleaning my hands off. Get all this grease off. At least try to. Okay, so check this out. I'm gonna have to come back to y'all because what happened was I just discovered a problem. I discovered that my the other side of that axle has a slight twist twist to it maybe like a one degree twist that's why every time my axle plunged all the way in it was getting jammed let me see if we can see it with the camera so these lines are supposed to be completely vertical and they have a, a twist completely right here this shaft this whole shaft twisted about right here these lines actually have a slight twist to them an angle to them and they start turning it about right here and they start to have a slight slant to it this way and that right there is causing my axle to bind up whenever it plunges all the way in and don't want to come out only way i was able to get it out was kind of tapping it with a hammer so if i continue to ride let me show you what was happening every time it jammed all the way up it couldn't plunge out so what it was doing it was trying to yank this out of the differential and that's why this tip this tip on here it started it was starting to shear off because i saw a few shavings on the inside of my differential i was grinding the tip of this up so good thing i caught it right now because i think this will be fine i wouldn't have any issues with it at all but because it was getting bound on the plunge and it wasn't re um rebounding back out it was going all the way in and then the whole axle was trying to pull itself out instead of just the axle trying to de-plunge it was trying to pull the whole dip piece out of the differential so I'm gonna go ahead and probably have to send this off. Ain't nothing I'm gonna be able to repair in here. I mean, cause the only thing I can think of is grinding down some of the notches, but you do that, you probably strip the whole axle at, at under high load. So I'm gonna go ahead and warranty this axle out and get a new one here. And then I'll finish this video up. I'll be back with y'all no time. Old axle out, out with the old and with the new. And I'm glad I checked this on the last time when I was fixing this axle. I noticed the other side didn't plunge on this end. And I couldn't find what was wrong initially. Put it back together. To, or took it apart, cleaned it, put it back together. And I still couldn't, and I, um, I still had the same issue until I looked at it and I saw that those splines had like a one degree twist in them. You could, you could see right in the, almost in the middle how they twist. And that was causing it to jam up in here. So I had to get a new axle. They're going to warranty it out. So the new one here, about to go ahead and pop it back on and continue with uh, the reassembly of the K&M. I got this pot, this Fresh and Fit podcast up loud. But uh, yeah, but just the um, bike about to go ahead, throw this diff back in with the axles. This ain't gonna take no time, put everything back together. And we, be, and we good. Okay, we got the new axle for the uh, rear right. And, uh, I have to go ahead and slap it back on. This one definitely looks different because it has the the harder boots on here. These are these are harder boots than the original original one had. But this is how I slap everything back together. Start so off by putting this thing first. WD-40 
body on this. get them locked in the differential you just go ahead like this differential is not even in yet I'm just gonna line it up shift it in put it in place slap the place off but at the same time I need to work on this axle because some reason I'm having trouble getting this one already all the way slid in so I'm gonna go ahead and try something suck it in a little more screw it all the way down that way I can pull it in properly I'm not tightening them up right now. I'm just going ahead and making sure they all the way have enough to uh, be all the way seated. Oh, this is a different love they sent me this time. It looks like it's a whole different axle. Believe it or not, it looks like my foot suit. All right, that's seated. I'll go ahead and start putting. Oh, I forgot. I can't put these on yet. I gotta line this shaft up because this has to slide in on that drive shaft. Just don't, don't slide in right now on the drive shaft. That drive shaft will never get on. So we go ahead. Put it in neutral so you can twist the, the drive shaft, but you'll never get it on the slide. There we go. There we go. Alright, now I got that on. Use the screwdriver just to kind of lift it up to get the screw holes in position. Oh, 
Shout out to Fresh and Fit Podcast, by the way. That's who I'm listening to in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. I got these tightened up. Uh, all these two and the other three on the back side. The long bolts that go crossways. All that's tightened up. I got the drive shaft put back in. Just gotta lay in your back. It's not. It's really not hard. The drive shaft kind of cocks and goes to the right a little bit, so it's easy to come in from this left side of the bike and pop the screw in. And what made it ten times easier? Get a number thirteen, but get a flex wrench. One of the one of the wrenches that has a neck on it, and have it at an angle like this. That way you can screw it at an angle without hitting without hitting the, um, the trailing arms. And in order to keep the head on. I just pin a, I just pin a, um, a flat head in that crack. That way, this it won't slide off the bolt, and I keep the bolt down to kind of keep some leverage pushed in between the wrench and uh, the yoke and what's just inside. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening up some of this stuff. Uh, the all the axles, the bolts are supposed to be at uh, 150 pounds. The torque wrench, of course. Yep. One hundred fifty on the dot, and then go ahead and pop your uh, you call it a cotter pin in. So the one, the rest of them are all. 27s, yeah, and this one's a 30. Hey, these are the only two sizes that I see when I'm dealing with axles for the can now 27 millimeter and 30 millimeter. Don't ask me why they gave me 30 millimeter for the replacement. Same brand axles. Have enough room to put a pin in. Yeah, they wasn't supposed to send that bolt. Let me get this other bolt from the last action. Yeah, they gave me this different bolt this time. And this is the bolt that's usually on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt from the old axle on here. So things can line up. Cause I didn't even seat further enough to where I had enough thread to even put a cotter pin on it. Oh, you know what? Oh, that's my bad. That's my fault. I'm glad I'm paying attention. I mean, I wouldn't have much of a choice, but this is on backwards. There we go. I'm gonna still put this bolt on. That way, I don't have to worry about getting multiple tools. Alright. 
Carpin, Carpin, Carpin. All right. Got him on. It's all tight. Go ahead and throw this brake caliper on. I think I got enough slack in there still. I see it got some grease down in there. And over that boot bust. Come on, brake caliper. Nope, I ain't got enough slack. So what do I do? Go ahead and take a flathead, put it in the middle and twist slowly. Slowly twist. There we go. So the brake pad is a soft, a soft compound and you would destroy them if you're going now all rough. All right, all right. Go around, make sure everything on, good. Tighten all four of those, those three. Holes back on. These are torqued. These two bolts over here. And main thing, biggest thing, most of all, make sure that these axles are locked inside this dip. Because if that's they, if they not in there, you're going to destroy this and this. And I definitely can't destroy this. This is a, a, a real differential I got from Mud and Wheels. I'm telling you right now, this bad boy is real. I ain't had no problem with it since I got it. So, all that's good. Time to go ahead and put these wheels back on. And just another quick way to check if your if your uh, that that center nut that's behind this cap in the center the, the uh, what do you call it the uh, what you call it the rear the drive the um dang <laughs> the axle the axle um main nut if it's loose when you put this wheel on there and you tighten this up if this wheel wobbles that nut's probably loose. If that's not the case, and it wobbles, your bearing's gone. So it's only gonna be two things that will cause this wheel to wobble after we tighten it down. So we're gonna do a wheel check too. Now 
look. I don't got any, hardly any. I can barely feel a little slack, and I know that that little slack is from my wheel bearing. And that's because this that, that nut had loosened up and started wearing down that bearing a little bit. But it's not, it's not bad. When these wheels start literally shaking, you know your bearing's about to go out, so it's time to change it. So anyway, this is all done, all wrapped up. We got everything finished up. Wheels are back on. About to drop it back down. And that's a that's how you change the boot. Axle, rebuild the axle. I mean, it was really just supposed to be a boot job, but look, ended up being a lot more educational. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Let me know what y'all think, and peace.